Welcome back to the channel, and in this video, I'll provide you with everything you need to know about the respiratory syncytial virus. Now, recently, there has been an unprecedented amount of RSV infections in the United States. And because of this, doctors are calling on the Biden administration to declare an emergency in response to an alarming surge of children that are being hospitalized for this virus infection. Now check this out. Infants six months and younger are getting hospitalized with RSV at more than seven times the weekly rate observed in around 2019. Now that's scary. So let's learn more about this virus and how we can protect our young ones. RSV causes respiratory infections in children, adults, and elderly people. It infects most children within their first two years of life. This virus can affect the upper or lower respiratory tract. Patients may experience mild cold symptoms, and this is seen in healthy individuals, and they usually recover in one to two weeks. Severe symptoms are seen in high-risk patients like premature babies, infants less than six months, patients with compromised immune systems, having chronic lung disease, or having congenital heart disease. People infected with RSV usually show symptoms within four to six days after getting infected. Children and adults may present with runny nose, headaches, sore throat, cough, decreased appetite, and a fever. Infants usually get very fussy and irritable, decreased eating, changes in their breathing, which can lead to blue or gray color to their lips and fingernails. And they may also present with coughing and a fever. As you can see, for infants, these symptoms can be very serious, and that is why it's important to understand how this virus can be transmitted so you can take the necessary precautions for your child. RSV is very contagious. It can spread through droplets released into the air when an infected person coughs or sneezes. They have skin-to-skin -skin contact or if you touch a contaminated surface, such as doorknobs. It can also spread through direct contact, so kissing the face of a child with RSV. Once you come in contact with the droplets, it can move into your body through your eyes, nose, or mouth. A person infected with RSV is contagious for about three to eight days after exposure, and for some, this can last up to four weeks even if they don't have symptoms. That's because the immune system are not good at eliminating the virus. And this is seen in infants and patients with a weak immune system. Rates of RSV can vary depending on the season. In the United States, RSV infections are mostly common during the fall, winter, and spring seasons. So now that we have the basic knowledge of this virus, we can learn about how to prevent it and also manage it. Avoid close contact with sick people. Also, if you're sick, try to stay away from your infants since they are at an increased risk. If it's possible, the other parents should be the main one handling the child. If not, then you could take some other precautions here like maintaining a good hand hygiene. So wash and scrub your hands with water and soap regularly and especially before holding a baby. Encourage older children and other caregivers to do the same. If you have RSV or any cold symptoms, make sure to cover your mouth and nose when you cough and sneeze with either your shirt sleeve or a tissue, not your hands. Also, avoid touching your face as much as possible or kissing your child's lips or face, especially if you have any cold symptoms. Disinfect contaminated surfaces, everything from doorknobs to countertops. And lastly, stay home when you're sick so you don't spread it to others. Now, because RSV is viral and it goes away on its own, just like the common cold, it is not routinely tested for during lab tests. But if they have to do the diagnosis, the doctor would go back based off the symptoms and the physical exam. Your doctor will listen to your child's lungs and do a nasal swab to test for RSV. Now, although there are ongoing trials and research for medication specifically for RSV, currently there is nothing specifically to treat RSV. While your body is fighting the infections, you may take some supportive care medications to help alleviate symptoms. So Tylenol, Ibuprofen as needed for fever and pain respectively. Never give aspirin to children. Vitamins that boost your immune system such as vitamin C can also help. Make sure to stay hydrated during this and get a lot of rest. Same thing applies for children. Monitor them closely, feed and hydrate them, and let them get a lot of rest if possible. Please contact your healthcare provider before you give your child any over-the-counter cold medicines because some may have ingredients that may be problematic for children. As we know by now, high-risk individuals such as premature babies, infants less than six months, etc., are more likely to develop severe symptoms like difficulty breathing, 
which can be possible pneumonia. Signs of dehydration in babies and young children include a dry mouth and tongue, crying without tears, lethargy, and dry diapers for eight hours or longer. Ear pain may be due to an infection as well. These symptoms will require the child to be hospitalized for monitoring and proper care. So in the hospital, oxygen may be provided to help with breathing, IV fluids will be given for dehydration, and antibiotics and supportive care medications will be given as needed. Now, before I end this video, I just wanted to quickly discuss a medication on the market for RSV that you may have heard of, Synergis or Palivizumab. First thing to know is that it is not a vaccine. It is a medication that is used for the prevention of serious lung disease in high-risk children aged less than two years who develop RSV. Lastly, it's a monthly injection with the first dose administered prior to commencement of the RSV season. Remaining doses are administered monthly through the RSV season. And that will be the end of this video. Hope you learned at least one thing. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and also follow me on my social media platforms. Thank you and take care.